Yeah, I mean, I think for us, you know, right now we're one and one and obviously had a really great win and a really tough loss. And, you know, I prepare our schedule for a reason um, so that we can learn about ourselves. And I think we learned a lot about ourselves after the North Carolina game. And, you know, when you play teams like that, uh, it helps you grow and helps you get better. And so I felt like today we had a really good practice. We were zeroing in on some very specific things where we needed to grow. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to... Um, we're not going to go away from who we are, which is to focus on one day at a time and try to get better every day. And so today we had an opportunity to get better, and that's what we're doing. And then we're going to have a new opportunity to play Wake Forest, who's a really good team on their home court. Um, and we've got to be more the team that we were at Richmond than we were at home. Uh, and I have no doubt that our team will be ready to do that. Uh, Coach, question for you about Kiki McKinney. She's made a big impact. Uh, you know, even in Sunday's results, she was the leading scorer with eight points. Uh, you know, she's really playing well for this team. So what do you think her role will be, and how do you think she can build off of this? And really, what are your overall thoughts about her performance so far? Yeah, I mean, she's doing what we need her to do. I mean, she came here to be an impact, impact player, um, and scoring is important for her. Uh, defending is really important for her. Those are her two main, main uh, roles. Now, I will say we have to do a better job getting her the ball. I thought um, in the second half of our Richmond game, we did a much better job getting her touches. Uh, in the North Carolina game, I don't think we did a great job getting her touches. And, you know, I've always been a believer that if you get, you know, touches in the paint, it's just harder to defend. And so we've got to be able to get her in a little bit better positions. But she's doing exactly what she came here to do, to, to impact our team on both ends, to be a high energy player. You know, I thought of everybody she competed the hardest over the 40 minutes. Um, and I know that she'll continue to do that. Coach, what was the message to your team like after that loss? Just, you know, still instilling in them confidence that, you know, they're a great team and moving forward that they can compete at a much higher level than they showed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I said this in my post-game press conference. Like, everybody was disappointed. You know, nobody's just – just brushing that off as like an oh well. Um, but it is still really early. And we know that we are much better than that team that played on Sunday. And, uh, you know, today, like I said, we got a lot of good work done in practice. But there wasn't a, like, let's just, just kill them and keep, you know, pounding them and uh, making them feel bad. I mean, everybody feels bad. Like, let's get back to work. And I think that's our mentality. Let's just get back to work. You know, we know what we are capable of. We also know it's not going to come together like, like that. I mean, we have so many new pieces this year um, between freshmen and transfers and players that opted out. Like, and you can see it. You can see it when we play offensively. We're not in a flow yet. We don't have any consistency. You know, we're still trying to figure out who gets shots where. That's going to take time, and we'll get there. Coach, question about J.C. Busek. Uh, you know, she's kind of been off to a slow start in the first two games. Uh, but there against North Carolina, she showed definitely some uh, flashes. She hit a three there. Uh, really kind of helped the team uh, down the stretch a little bit. Um, so how do you think that she can kind of get out of the slump and continue to be a big part of this offense and really play up to that potential? Well, I think – you know, just like many of our players, JC's still figuring out her role. Her role is different this year than it was last year. We've talked about that a little bit. You know, number one, she needs to be an energy playmaker for us. Um, she's going to come in. She's going to defend. She's going to talk. She's going to set screen. She's going to rebound. She's going to do all of those things. And when she finds opportunities, you know, to, to take open shots, she's going to do that. But it's a process for her, just like it is for everybody else. Um, so, you know, when I look at it, I don't just look at, you know, JC starting slow. I think a lot of us are because, again, we're, we, we're, we're figuring it out. And, you know, the thing about JC is she's going to play as hard as she can. She's going to give great effort, and she's going to figure it out. Hey, Coach, congratulations on the all-time wins leader with your 176 win last Tuesday. Um, how do you feel about that and what, what has led to such a good tenure here? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I, I reflected a lot on it, and, um, you know, I've, I've, I've said this, just, just thankful for the opportunity to be here. Um, I think what's led to that is we do things the right way. We've had uh, great people come through that have been part of my staff that have helped me grow uh, and made me better, made our players better. Uh, we care about our players. Um, we want them to get better on and off the court. Um, and we've had players that have bought into that. We've had, you know, just, just great kids. I mean, on the, on the court, you know, they honored me before the game and they showed, you know, a video with, you know, it might have been 
eight to ten former players um, thanking me. And, you know, thanks a lot, Ozzy. You got me in crying. Because, I mean, that's, that's what matters. And I think that's what's led to, you know, all the wins and all the time here is, you know, we do things the right way. We care about our players. Our players care about us back. And uh, in my opinion, that re leads to a lot of success. Uh, Coach, over the last two years, uh, Wake and Charlotte have swapped victories when y'all played. Two years ago, y'all got the win in Winston-Salem. Last year, Wake got a win over Charlotte. So do you feel like uh, this matchup is starting to become almost a rivalry as both games have been highly contested? Uh, and also, after Sunday's result, do you feel like this is even more of an important game of what could be a rivalry? Uh, and also, do you feel it's a must win? Yeah, we've really enjoyed playing Wake through the years. I think they've enjoyed playing us. Um, and we have gone back and forth. We've also, I, I think almost every game we've had with them, for the most part, has been very closely contested. Um, so we match up well with each other. We recruit a lot of the same players, so they all know each other. Um, so I would definitely say that there is some type of rivalry between us, but it's certainly one of great respect. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to playing them. You know, I don't, I don't think Thursday is any bigger based on Sunday. Sunday's over. We're past that. Like, we, we can't let that, you know, we have to learn from it, but we can't let that um, really be in our mind when we go out on Thursday. It's a new day, an opportunity to beat Wake Forest, and, and that's what we need to be focused on. Coach, you've mentioned, you know, everybody has to learn how to play with one another, get back in the swing of things. But, you know, the, one of the captains, one of the senior leaders on the team, Octavia Jet Wilson. What do you think, for her specifically, she needs to do to you know get back in that rhythm of you know last year scoring twenty five and even you know forty points on occasion? Well, I think right now Tay is trying too hard, um, and you know we talked about this. Her and I talked about this somewhat, you know, quite a bit when she was coming back. That you know the the player she was last year is going to be harder to be this year. Um, you know even. You know, North Carolina game, you watch that game. Anytime Tay came off a ball screen, she had three people on her. Her defender, the post defenders, and the other guard's defender. And she just has to learn to play a little bit differently because that, that wasn't the case last year. You know, nobody had the respect for Octavia that they have now. And she's got to get used to understanding that she's going to draw a big crowd. And, you know, because of that, she just, she just has to get a little bit more patient. She can't just put her head down into three people and – you know, try to make a play. To me, that again, that's just playing. That's just trying too hard. You know, let the game come to her a little bit. Um, you know, be able to trust her teammates to know that. You know, the more that she can kick it out and they can make shots, the less people they can bring to help her. So she'll get it. She'll get there. Um, but it's certainly not. You know, um, it's certainly not that she's not trying. She's trying to do everything maybe a little bit too much right now. Uh, Coach Callie Connick is, you know, the definition of a three and D player. Um, for the team. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, how does it feel to have a player that can do both really well? And what does she mean to the team when she's out on the court, uh, you know, helping the team uh, when it comes to momentum shifts? Yeah, I mean, I think Callie can help us a lot. Um, you know, she's a type of player that when her feet are set and she shoots it, you think the ball's going in every time. And, you know, I think we just need to do a, a little bit jo better job finding her. Like I thought, so, again, on Sunday, there were some times where they weren't playing her. And we can't allow teams to not play her. We've got to be able to find her so she can knock those, down those shots. Um, and again, be able to take those defenders, those extra defenders off of Tay, off of J-Mac. Uh, right now, they're just, they're, just, they're just occupying so much of the defense. So, um, you know, again, it's, it's just <laughs> the same thing I've been saying. Finding that chemistry, you know, figuring that out, getting our eyes up, being able to see, you know, who's open where, and, and we'll get better. Coach, this one's from Mark on Zoom. He says, by the scores, it appears that Wake looks to play a slower pace. How will that affect what you all try to do against him on Thursday? Well, I think for us, I mean, we almost every scouting report in our keys to win is play Charlotte pace. You know, for us, you know, we are much better when we get out in transition and we can push the pace. I mean, no better example than on Sunday when we couldn't get any stops. And because we couldn't get any stops, we couldn't get up and get, get anything in, in transition. Um, so we've, we've got to just be focused on playing our game. Uh, we've got to be able to defend better so we can get stops and be able to get to the pace that we want to play. Uh, Wake does have a really good one two, 2 press that they're going to use to slow us down and trap us a little bit. So we have to be able to attack that press and have an attacking mentality. Uh, Coach, can you comment on Cameron Roach's uh, availability and injury status. Yeah, Cameron Roach is getting close. Um, you know, she's been out with a knee injury. Uh, she actually did some um, 
half court, you know, full go reps today in practice, which was the first time. So I think, you know, we've kind of had maybe Delaware or maybe Thanksgiving as uh, when she will be available. But, you know, it's just really day to day at this point. I think physically she's getting close, uh, but there's still so much she has to learn, you know, that she's missed reps, um, still being a new player in the program. So we're not going to put her out there until she's ready, uh, but hopefully she can be ready soon. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever felt Halton Arena that electric other than an Education Day game, of course. Um, and, you know, even though it wasn't, unfortunately, much of a fun game to watch from a fan standpoint, you know, the, the fans stayed and they cheered. And, you know, whenever we were able to make a positive play, they, they had our back. And so I would just say, you know, to anybody watching this that, that came, please come back. Um, you know, that was an uncharacteristic loss for us at, at Halton Arena, um, and that's not going to happen again. And so I hope, you know, everybody will understand that, you know, bad things happen. Crap happens, <laughs> you know, and that, that's kind of – we got to flush that. But, um, you know, it, it was fun to see so many people come out and support our team, so many come out in the community. Um, I know I said this, Nicole Woods just – my recruiting coordinator worked her tail off to get, you know, a lot of high school teams there. And, and I just hope people will stick with us because the next time they come, I, I, I certainly believe they're going to be, they're going to see the real Charlotte women's basketball team. Another question from Mark coach, uh, how much does having Michaela Boykin on the floor change Jada McMillan's role? Um, I don't know how much it changes uh, Jada again. Um, you know, for us, we hope that Michaela can be kind of the third guard to stretch the floor for us. I mean, she has – we haven't seen it consistently yet, but she has um, a really high-level ability to make shots and to knock shots down. Um, and, you know, again, the more that we can put people around Jada and Octavia that can stretch the floor for us, you know, the better we're going to be, you know. Um, so I, I don't know if it really changes Jada's role. I think it just helps in terms of, of allowing her to play her role at a better level. Hey, Coach, what has been the message this week to the women so they can have a better performance uh, coming off this loss this past Sunday? Yeah, the big message is we just have to compete harder. Um, I didn't feel like, you know, in our loss that, that our effort was poor. Um, and I think a lot of times, sometimes people confuse effort and competing. Um, they're, they're two different things. Um, and we, we don't struggle with effort. I, I never have to get on my team about effort. I never have to run them for that or, or, or anything of that nature. But we didn't compete the way that we need to compete. And, and competing is, you know, of course, bringing that high effort, but also doing the things required to win and doing that at a really high level. And, and that's what we didn't do. We didn't do the things that are required to win. You can't let somebody come into your house and shoot 50% and get 18 old boards. You, I mean, you just, that's not a recipe for winning. Well, the boxing out is controllable. And to me, that, that, that's an example of competing. It's not just trying to box them out. It's not just giving great effort to box them out. It is getting the rebound, point blank, period right? And so that's just one example of our message to the team this week. We have to compete at a higher level, and we will.